Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Catherine Shelton and I wanted to make this video today to talk about Mother's Day. Specifically, what I wanted to do was go niche hunting to find some ideas that I could turn into books that I can publish on Amazon's KDP service, primarily for Mother's Day. But the really cool thing about mothers is that they exist year round. We are always here. So I think Mother's Day is a really fun thing to create books for because you can sell the books and get a big spike in sales, hopefully just before Mother's Day, which is usually in May. I think it's May the 12th this year. But also you can sell those books year round. Now, I'm a big fan of creating seasonal books, seasonal products, because I notice that buyers really seem to get a need and urge to buy things just before holidays. So by having a lot of products available for different holidays like Valentine's, Mother's Day, Halloween, you do get those sales spikes, but also you get evergreen year round sales. So I'm talking mostly about KDP today, which is Amazon's print on demand book service. Now, KDP is really fantastic because you can create all kinds of paperback books, from small books to big ones. You can print black and white books. You can also make full color books. It's a really exciting platform. This is an example of just a really simple notebook I made for KDP. I use tangent templates for the interior. So it has a lined paper. This one has cream paper and a matte cover. In the cover, I used a NASA stock image that's public domain. So I think they look really nice. They have a really good sort of touch and feel to them. And I think they make really good gifts. Now, I would encourage you, though, to go a little bit further than just making line notebooks. A lot of people are making line notebooks. So there's a lot of competition out there unless you want to really delve into marketing and a lot of advertising and keyword SEO. However, there's a lot of space for guided journals, for planners, for books with a little bit more content. And I'm going to be showing you a couple of my examples, ideas of that during this video. So bear in mind, there's all kinds of things you can put on a book. You can just make notebooks and just give them interesting covers that are tailored to Mother's and Mother's Day. Or you can go a bit further and make planners and more complex interiors. It's not that hard, so stick with me and we'll talk about that. So before we jump into that, let's talk a bit about mothers and finding great niches for Mother's Day. So back in the day when I had my very first course about selling online, it was my Amazon Bundles course, one of the things I used to do was have bundle casts. And bundle casts were where I did a live class and people jumped in and chatted with me and shared their ideas. And we all just did a group brainstorm. One of the first bundle casts I did was actually on Mother's Day. And what I did for that was I got a bunch of dolls, like Barbie dolls, and I held them up. And what we did was we gave them names, we gave them jobs, we thought about their marital status, how many children they had, what age of those children, what their interests were, what their beliefs were. And we basically created a lot of avatars or characters that we could think about when we were creating Mother's Day products. And it was really interesting to me because I couldn't resist picking up these Barbie dolls the other day. And these two Barbie dolls are just awesome because they are so niche -y. This is Chicken Farmer Barbie. Can you believe they now have Chicken Farmer Barbie? And there's all the chickens that she comes with and the eggs. And they have Beekeeper Barbie. And I absolutely love that. Like, I think bees are actually a really growing niche right now. A lot of people are concerned about bees. They're keeping bees. They're learning how to handle bees. And what I loved about these is that they're showing that women do all kinds of just amazing jobs. They have all kinds of interesting interests. We're not just all about hearts and flowers and hugging our children. Although well, those are nice things. But I feel that very much when you look around sort of big box stores at Mother's Day displays, that's what they think we're all into. They're like, oh, women, they like hearts, they like flowers, they like chocolates. Great, done. But the cool thing about making products that mothers actually want to buy or that people want to gift to mothers is that they are personal. They actually mean something and they have some sort of emotional connection with the person that you're buying them for, with the mother that you're buying them for. So I think about mothers 
and I see just a wide, wide range of people. One of the other things I've found that really sells books too is if they solve a specific problem. A lot of people, when they're buying gifts, especially for someone close to them, like their mother, they want to buy something very personal, and maybe they also want to buy something that will help a mother who's dealing with a specific issue. Like, for example, if they beat breast cancer, maybe they want a breast cancer survivor's book or journal. That might be something that, that uh, has some meaning to them. Or if they're pregnant, perhaps, like mothers can be expectant mothers. And maybe you can have a gift that includes sonograms or has space for them to stick sonograms in. Right? There's all kinds of books you can create that actually are gift worthy and beautiful, but also fulfill a purpose or fulfill a need. And in my experience, I found that the books that I sell the most are ones that are useful, the ones that people will actually use and fulfill a need, other than just being a nice gift. So with this video, I've also created a downloadable PDF ebook. And in that, I've included a worksheet that helps you to really brainstorm mothers, what their needs are, what their interests are. And some of the things I would recommend thinking about when you think of niches Look at life stages. That's the first one. Like mothers are at all different life stages. There are pregnant moms, expectant moms. There's new moms, moms who are breastfeeding, moms who are working, moms with school kids, all the way through to moms of teens, moms with adult kids, and grandmas, great grandmas. Like there are so many different sort of ages of mother out there. That's a huge sort of demographic to look at, first of all. What stage of life are mums at? There's also all kinds of family structures. We've got single mums, newlywed mums, mums who've been married forever, mums who've had six marriages, uh, mums who are engaged, stepmums, poly mums, LGBT mums, mums of pets. Like some people consider their fur babies, their babies. There's people with elderly family around, people living with extended family. There are all kinds of different family setups. And if you create a book that's perfect for stepmoms or says something new about stepmoms that hasn't been said before, you could have an amazing seller there. Other niches to consider are things like cultural background, nationality. Like, I love British chocolate. If you can get me British chocolate in America, I am very, very happy. But things like language, that can be an awesome thing to put into a gift. Religion, faiths, different beliefs, spiritualities, things like Wicca, paganism, New Age ideas. Like a lot of mums love things like that and would be like really grateful for a book that talks about those things. There's also things like subcultures. Like what kind of groups are people into? Some people are into homeschooling. Some people might be bikers and ride every Saturday. Like, people have very different parenting styles, different political beliefs. Doesn't stop them being a mom. All of those things are part of what moms are. There's also challenges that different moms face. And this is when the idea of usefulness comes in, in your gift or in your book. What about moms who are dealing with chronic illnesses? What about moms who are dealing with mental illness or dealing with children who have some challenges some learning difficulties, like things like planners and tailored planners can be really, really invaluable for people who are dealing with very specific issues. You can even look at things like homelessness, a jailed parent, parents who are grieving. Like there are a lot of ways that your book could actually maybe help someone. Interests, of course, is huge and wide open. For interests, you can look at things like sports. You can look at escapism. And by escapism, I mean books, movies, TV shows, video games. Where do moms like to go? And I think this is one of those things where you will see so much diversity. Some people love fantasy and Game of Thrones and Tolkien. Some people love like true crime and serial killers. Some people, some of my friends are really big into serial killers. It's a thing. Some people love like romance and Fifty Shades of Grey, like everyone has their own different place that they escape to. And by tapping into those little areas of escapism, 
you can find something that some teenage kid somewhere is going to go, whoa, my mom needs that book. That is the best book for my mom. And by tapping into that escapism, you can probably create a book that some teenager somewhere is going to say, whoa, my mom needs that book. That book was made for her. Another thing, occupations. Look at what mums do. If they're nurses, if they're teachers, if they have a government job, if they're a volunteer for an organisation. Maybe they play sports professionally. Maybe they're a farmer. Like people, maybe they're a beekeeper or a chicken farmer. People have all kinds of occupations. Some people work with the public. Some people work at conferences. Some people work outdoors. All of those things are perfect for gifts. Like find a gift that reflects something something special about a mom. Create a, a book cover or create a planner that reflects something special about that mom. So I do suggest you try out the example mom worksheet just to sort of get your brain ticking. Or if you're just stuck for ideas, start creating some characters and sort of come up with some ideas for what those moms do and what they're like. So what I've started off with here is really using your own brain, using your own knowledge, your own thoughts, your own ideas to generate some ideas. But what I'd like to do now is start delving a little bit more into research. So in a moment, I'm going to actually show you how to find out a lot of real information and demographic information on moms, what they do, what they like, what their interests are. But before I do that, I just want to visit Etsy quickly, because I think Etsy is such a great indicator of what's trending and what people are interested in. So I was looking earlier on Etsy, just typing in the word mother. And I saw so many interesting ideas here. One thing that I see is huge are trees of life. And this really kind of sent me down a path because I thought about life and this concept of the mother being the person who gives life. And I think I'd probably cry if like one of my children said, thank you for giving me life, mummy. That would, it, it would probably make me cry. It would, it would, it would get me in the feels. Um, but I think there's a lot of other ways of representing that. And bear in mind here that books can be sentimental, they can make you cry, they can be very heartfelt and, and loving. They can also be silly, funny, playful, mildly offensive. Like, think about greetings cards and how they range the whole gamut from, oh, you're so old, to I love you so much. Like, people love all kinds of different sentiments, depending on their own personality. So Etsy is kind of a fun place to look because you can really see some of the ideas that people are going with, like mom or mama established with the, the year that the child was born. <laughs> Don't mess with mamasaurus, you'll get giraffes kicked. Like that's like a funny thing right there. There's <laughs> Freddie Mercury there doing mama. Ooh. And I, I love that because that kind of plays with mama as like a word, as a pun, as like, where is mother mentioned? Because you've also, oh, what's the other son? The mother! Like, you, you've got a lot of songs that are about mothers. You do have to be careful with copyright, with trademark, even if it is a parody. Etsy, you can get away with that a bit more. But there's a lot of really, like, fun ideas there. Of course, there's our dear president putting out a Mother's Day message there. And just a whole lot of different ideas. Now, you may look at this and go, oh my gosh, I never have the creativity to come up with this. Tree of life, that's amazing. But what I did, the way my brain sort of took from that, mothers represent life. What else represents life? Like the tree of life. The, the, this is kind of what the idea of this is. What else represents life? So one thing I did was go to Google and just type in symbols of life and represents life. And one thing I found was the ank is listed as an object or design resembling a cross used in ancient Egypt as a sim symbol of life. And I thought that was a really interesting concept, that maybe you could create ank jewellery, but explain why. Also, I looked up things like mother goddess, like famous mothers, historical mothers, like you can look at Isis, at Gaia, there's a lot of things out there that represent motherhood in different ways. So you can get really creative with this. Like look up anything that's about life, anything that's about big and small, like baby animals with mama animals. People love that. You can even do it with like objects. If you have like, I don't know, a big cup and a little cup, you could have like a joke about... It's kind of like all those jokes. Like what did the big telephone say to the little telephone? Like you're too young to be engaged. Hey! 
but you can put in jokes. There's a lot of directions you can go with the concept of motherhood. Like, don't be stuck on what other people have done or what you think mothers are about. If you have a funny idea, the great thing with KDP is it costs you nothing to try it and to put that idea out there, whether it's a book cover or whether you made a whole book on the subject. Okay, so let's delve into some demographics. And one of my favorite go-to places, and I've made a couple of videos about this in the past, is Facebook's Audience Insights. Now, Audience Insights is created for people who run Facebook adverts. So you, I think you do need to have a Facebook advertising account, but it's free. It's free to set one up. You just have to go to business.facebook.com and set up an advertising account. And if all things go well, you might actually want to use it as well to run some adverts. Now, Audience Insights allows you to really explore and research any particular audience. And I'm going to show you a little bit about how it works. So first of all, what you see at the top here is 150 to 200 million people. That is a large amount of people. And what that represents is pretty much everyone on Facebook who's over 18. Now we can drop that number by clicking women. Oh, okay. So that doesn't quite halve it. It's a bit smaller than half because actually I think most people on Facebook are women. There are more women. In fact, it tells you 55% of people on Facebook are women. So by uh, clicking women, we've immediately just changed our audience. And I'll show you how that works. So we'll go back to all genders and take a look at page likes. So these are the most popular pages that people on Facebook like. It gives you a good idea. People like going to AMC theatres. Their favorite household supply is duct tape. People love Larry the Cable Guy and George Lopez. So if we switch that over to women you'll see things start changing. Now suddenly you see cosmetics store in there, Ulta Beauty and Sephora. Websites people like Screaming Owl, Bath and Body Works, The Pioneer Woman. So you can see how the, these likes start changing when you alter the audience. So now let's make it age 25 plus and see if it changes anything. So yes, it does a little bit. We have Dollar General showing up there now. Weight Watchers <laughs> comes in when the, the audience gets a little bit older and so on. So we want to find parents. So let's go to all parents and we've selected women. And now you can see like top products are things like Lysol, Pampers, box tops for education. Like there's a lot more sort of parenting websites creeping in here. So we can keep going with this. We could do things like language. We can add a language in there. So we can say, okay, what do people who speak Spanish, what do moms who speak Spanish enjoy and it gives you a bunch of likes that they're into so that's pretty cool this gives you a lot of tips of both ideas of things they might be into interests it also gives you an idea for how to market things if you can find influencers in here if you can find products and companies that people in your demographic like you can use that for your marketing like maybe you can do reviews of a certain sort of product on YouTube and mention your book at the same time. Like there's a lot of ways you can actually use this information. So we'll go back, we'll take Spanish out of here. And what I'll do is actually change the age of a child. So we can target moms of very specific age groups. So if you want to target moms of teenagers because you think the teens might go and buy your book on Amazon to buy for their moms, you can go child... 13 to 18. So what do moms of teenagers like? Do we see anything interesting creeping in there? So I do see, I see a lot of religious sites coming in, like the, the Bible, Godvine. I see things like Cracker Barrel. And one thing that's interesting is you can also change things by location. So you can see where moms are. And you can even do clever things like just choose like women in New York, for example and see how that changes things. So if we see what moms in moms of teenagers in New York like, it gets even more specific. The Lion King musical, Buffalo Bills, Duncan. So what does this tell us that we could bring into a book? We could use donuts. We can be like, we could have a musical, like a family musical log for logging your trips to musicals. Like there are a lot of ways you can use this. Keurig, people like Keurig coffee makers. So Oh, what, what about doing like a creative book where your kid can draw like, mom, if you were a coffee pod, you would be this one because this is my favorite. Like maybe you could make like, 
I don't know, coffee pods for moms or a colouring book of coffee. Like, there are so many ways you can use this information once you start learning what different moms are into. So you can explore this forever. Like, there's so much information you can get with this. You can even explore different life events, like people who are living away from home, people who are going into a new job or a new relationship. So if you wanted to do, like, bridesmaid gifts for your mom, that could be a sort of a possibility that kids can give to their mom who's getting married. So there's all kinds of ideas in here that are relevant for both Mother's Day and for moms year-round. Now, the other thing you can do with audience insights, if you're thinking, well, these are very general audiences, I'm not quite sure how to use them, and maybe you want to do something like target moms with girls. Well, that isn't an option. You can't select moms with girls. It just has ages of a child. But what you can do is actually use things like interest. And I would imagine a lot of moms with girls, not all, obviously, because everyone's unique, but one way to pick up on moms of girls is to find sort of girl interests, like American Girl Dolls. And if you look at that, you can see, like, suddenly these interests change a lot. Like, what are moms who are into American Girl into? Like, suddenly you see things like this Early Learning Academy, trips to Great Wolf Lodge Water Park... Vera Bradley bags. Like, this is actually kind of interesting because I feel not only does it target moms with girls, but it t tends to target women who maybe ha are in a slightly higher income spending bracket. Because I'm seeing things like Pottery Barn, Pink Coconut Boutique, like a lot of more sort of fancy brands in there. So this really gives you a way to explore different things. I mean, like, alternatively, you can uh, look up things like McDonald's. I don't know if that's a... It is. You can check it out. You can do like moms who go to McDonald's and see what comes up. Like, it's really interesting to just get these different ideas and explore different demographics with audience insights. So another site I like to use, and this one's easy. It's super, super simple to use and it's fun. And this guy always shouts at me is answerthepublic.com and if you've taken any of my courses I've probably told you about answerthepublic.com but I love this because you can just type in something like moms and you click get questions and it takes a moment and what it does is finds all the questions people are asking about moms so you can see things like what moms need postpartum what moms want for their birthday where moms connect are moms always right? <laughs> Are moms mean? Now, this is really fun because you could do like the mean moms journal or mom is always right planner. Like there's a lot of like fun things you can take from this to make like a strong, to make a strong book title and to get people's attention. And the cool thing is if you create a book that's something like the mean moms planner, that's the kind of thing that people are going to share on social media because they're going to be like, people think I'm a mean mom. Okay, fine. Here's the mean mom planner. Well, the moms are always right. Like, I feel that could easily be part of like a BuzzFeed list. It could be on Board Panda, like all the kind of social media things where people share quirky or interesting things. Making a strong statement or a strong emotional offer like that can be very powerful. So I love, I love Answer the Public because it gives me a lot of ideas like that. And you can also try mom, you can try mother, try mama, like try all the different things and see what niches, what ideas you generate. And always keep like a notebook with you or, or an open tab on your computer that you can just type all your ideas into. Because that way, when you're feeling like, oh no, I've got a block and I haven't got an idea, you can just go through and mine that for some new ideas. I also love this, that it, it gives you things like moms for moms can moms can code there you go there's a great niche there like a, co a book to help moms learn to code moms can be fit you've got moms for social justice moms for america moms for mars that's great that sounds like a band i don't know what that is um but th there's a lot of this kind of gives you problems that need to be solved there's also and this is pretty amazing uh, comparisons mom versus dad quotes so these are all books right here you could do a book and you could write funny mom quotes funny dad quotes and you could even turn it into a game where you write down their funny things they say and keep score of who was funniest each day now you can totally gamify your books like create point systems create rewards make tick charts or star charts 
a lot of ways you can use this. Mom or mommy. Um, like, I don't know. I feel like that could be a game. The older kids could vote for mom and the younger kids could vote for like calling her mommy. Just more and more. Like there's just Answer the Public is packed with ideas. So a big favorite for me for research. One more tool I love for research is Google Correlate. And this one tends to blow people's minds a little bit, but it's actually not that complicated. What Google Correlate does, let's say we, we look up something like mittens. Now, mittens is a very seasonal word. When you look up mittens, it's pretty much winter. So other things you might be looking for in winter are things like knitted hat or glove liners or like woolly boots or electric blankets. So these are things that don't, and, and this works very differently from other search engines. Because other search engines generally give you words that are directly related to mittens. This instead gives you words and key phrases that are being searched for around the same time as mittens. That basically the search patterns are kind of the same. So this is a really fun place to go and generate some really out of the box niches and ideas. So you can look up things like Mother's Day and see what sort of suggestions come up for Mother's Day. It sometimes helps to exclude literally Mother's Day because you'll find more things. Um, it's like a mushroom festival at the same time as Mother's Day. And I also like that it has Mother's Day songs, sayings for mothers, mothers in the Bible, crafts. So this gives you an idea of things people are looking for around Mother's Day. You can also just do mothers and see what interesting things come up for mothers. When people are searching for mothers, what else are they thinking about? So you have things like Mother's Day tea. That could be a recipe book there. If people are looking for ideas for a special tea or a special dinner, there you go. You could create a recipe book for that. Or you could also do a guest book. So if you're organizing a party or tea for your mom, people could put their information in there. There's also things like Mother's Day Australia. Like, think outside the box. Amazon is reachable in a lot of countries. So you can try making your books in different languages for different countries. And I know British Mother's Day is on a different day from American Mother's Day. So a lot of sort of options there. So another tool that I like to use, and I have to give it a plug because it's my tool and Isaac's, is our product Tangent, the Tangent Research Suite. Now, bear in mind, this is not included in Tangent Templates. It is a separate product from Tangent Templates, but it's a really, really fun set of tools to help you generate ideas for books, for products, for marketing, for anything. And there is a Tangent Word Suggester in here, and you can do things like Moms Who in here. So you have like things like Moms Who Play Fortnite, Moms Who Work From Home, Moms Who Beat The System. Whoa, I love that one. Um, moms, whoa, moms who leave their families. It got dark. You can get a lot of ideas just by typing in things in tangent words and getting some keyword suggestions from there. Here's another search I love doing, like things like mom's love. And you could do mother's love, mama's love. But look at how this comes up with ideas for you. It has things like mom's love you forever. I love my mom's shirt. Moms love crochet patterns. See, I wouldn't have thought of that one. Moms love crochet patterns. That's a really fun one. So you could do a book that you can give to your mom that has pattern, like graph paper for crocheting. In fact, you could probably use the knitting paper in Tangent Templates to actually generate that book immediately. You could do mom's crochet paper book. I don't know. You'd have to check whether crochet paper is different from knitting paper, but I get the feeling you could probably use both. So a lot of different ideas there for quickly creating niched books for different moms using the tangent words. So I promised I would give you a couple of examples of mom books that I've come up with. So one of them I think is super simple. This is one I made for homeschool moms. So I called this Magical Trips with Mom. And I've created this using Canva. Of course, you can make your covers using any graphics tool, pretty much, as long as it will be large enough to create a KDP book cover, which most of them are. You can use pretty much any graphics tool. Isaac uses Photoshop, and he's created some really awesome tutorials for how to use Photoshop to create covers. I tend to use Canva. I have a full length video on making covers with Canva. And what I tend to do is use the KDP helper in Tangent Templates, which gives me all the dimensions I need. So if I'm creating, let's say, six by nine book, 
that's 100 pages. What I do is run this through... Yeah, I do want bleed. I'll run this through KDP Helper, and it gives me a template for my cover. It gives me all the, in, the dimensions I need, and it gives me all the interior dimensions and template as well. So I tend to use that to get going. I, I put the dimensions into Canva. I use the template in Canva, and this is a cover that I created using Canva. And I got this image from Etsy, the image of the mom and daughter. I actually purchased it on Etsy. It was super cheap. I think it was like $3 for a bundle of them. But there's a lot of ways of getting cool images. Now, you have to be careful with Canva. Some of the elements are fine to use, but some of them you actually can't use. So the way you can tell, like if we look up something like cat, you can see that these all have different price tags, different things on them. So if they have a crown, generally you can't use these for print on demand. You can only use images that don't have a crown, like this one. And the way you can confirm is you just click where there's these three dots, and then you click the title of the element. And what you're looking for it to say is use it in all your designs. As long as it says that, you are good to go. You can use that image in your book. If it says for one use only and you have to purchase a license, Unfortunately, you can't use that for print on demand, so don't use those in your book. However, there's all kinds of other ways to get images. I use a lot of public domain images. The NASA book I showed you here, this one is a public domain image. There's no problem with using those on KDP. Also, I tend to buy things from places like designbundles.com. There's a lot of other stock image sites. Many of them ask you to alter or change the picture before you use it. So they do want you to sort of add some of your own elements to it. But always read the licensing and that way you'll know what you need to do with it to use that image in your book or on the cover of your book. But there's a lot of ways to get images. As I say, I got this one from Etsy. I checked the licensing and purchased it to use it on my book. So use your creativity. Go out there, look for great images. Always check the licensing. Make sure that you are covered to use them for print on demand. Sometimes commercial licenses don't include print on demand. So it's always best to email or reach out to the legal department of that website if you're not sure. Like check the terms and conditions first. Check the licensing first. And if you're not sure, email them and get it in writing. And that way you know you're safe and you're not going to have a problem down the line. So there's a cover that I created in Canva. And then the interior for this book, basically it's something like this. I, the idea of it is it's a field trip log for homeschooling moms. And I think it's really cute. It has magical field trip and you can put the date and time of the trip you went on, the venue, the cost of the trip and what you did while you were there. And then you can talk about you have one side for mom to review the trip and one side for the kid to review the trip. And the fun thing is it really gets you thinking about this trip and then it says, where do you want to go next? So you can both sort of, like the, the mom and child can fill out their ideas and then also think about the next trip. And then when you filled out this book, you have like this whole beautiful like book full of memories and special days out. And I think this would be especially fun for like single moms who have to take the trips on their own with the kid. It gives them something to sort of do with this, some focus and a way to really reflect and think about the day and make something awesome out of the day. So I think this is a really fun interior. Of course, you can do reviews of all kinds of things. You can be like meals out with mom. You can make adult versions of these for like mom and dad. That would be a really fun like anniversary gift. You could do sort of mom and dad's date night book and they can write where they went for dates or when they went to restaurants, review them. Like a lot of different directions you can take this kind of interior. You could create a book full of like maybe a hundred of these that they can fill out. Or you can add your own details. So you could put like sketching pages in so the child can draw pictures of where they went. You could put writing pages in, story paper, journal paper. So you can sort of expand on it more. There's like use your creativity. There are no rules to how you're making these books. You can really use your creativity in here. You could also put dated pages, so you could put, you could make like a, a book for the whole year or, or for every week with 52 pages, so you could have weekly field trips. Like there's all kinds of different ways of using this concept, but that would be a really simple book to make. So that would be the interior and that would be the cover. 
Now, another direction you can go is to do things like acronyms. And I love wordplay. I'm a big fan of just looking at the word mother and finding jokes about it, finding puns, finding alliteration, like all those things we do in English. But acronyms are huge. Like it's always fun to come up with acronyms. So for example, I did mother, mindful. And my concept for this was moms with an edge. So I thought it was really fun to have mindful, organized, teacher hugs, edge reflection. And the way this works, so I created an interior for this one as well. And this was my idea. So every day, so this would be daily. I think I'd probably put a date on here or space for them to write a date. But it's kind of like a planner. And each day you have a prompt. What step will you take towards better physical or mental health today? So that's kind of mindfulness. Then you have organizing. Which task is most important today? So this is actually kind of practical and useful for moms to look at this and go, okay, this is an important task. I need to do this. What can you share with someone today? So what can you teach someone? Who will you hug today? Because I think hugs are a big part of being a mom. And I also have reflection. What did you learn today? But the, the kind of hook for this, the, the selling point of this is edge. What strength will you draw on today? So it's like, how are you going to build yourself up as a mom? And you can play with this in different ways. Like what makes you different? What makes you special? How do you do self-care and like focus on your self-improvement? And so it's kind of like a planner to remind moms to not just think about kids, but also to look at themselves and how they can sort of have self-improvement. So just a couple of different ideas for books you can create for moms. Of course, like the sky is the limit. You can make coloring books, you can make puzzle books, activity books, quizzes. Like how fun would that be? You can do like questions about things mom loves or challenge mom. That would be a fun book right there. You can do stuff like Mad Libs. Like, there are really so many different kinds of book you can create without having to actually sit down and write a book. Like, these low-content books, they take me maybe, I don't know, an hour to do the interior when I do something like this, and probably, like, 20 minutes, half an hour to do a cover. Like, they're really not very time-consuming. And the great thing is, once they are on KDP, they are published on Amazon, they are live, people can go ahead and buy them and order them from you, and you get paid every time they sell. You never have to spend anything or, or spend on inventory. So KDP is just an incredible platform. And if you haven't checked it out already, I recommend you do. If you're already on KDP, I hope this video has been useful. I hope it's been fun. I hope you can go out there, create some books for moms and have a lot of fun with this and hopefully make some money. We have a lot of other videos. Just do check my channel. We have videos on creating covers, creating interiors with Keynote. The tool I use to make these interiors, as I say, is Keynote. I like it because you can really create very powerful tables. It looks nice. It has a lot of styling options. And it's just really the most powerful tool I use for creating interiors. If you want to go the professional route, InDesign is really sort of the ultimate tool for creating book interiors. Isaac uses InDesign pretty much exclusively to create interiors. I use Keynote. You can also use PowerPoint or Google Slides. I find they are not quite as heavy on features as Keynote. There's things Keynote can do that PowerPoint can't. But PowerPoint is a pretty good alternative if you don't have an iOS account or any Mac devices. So I hope you have fun with this. I hope you go and create some awesome books. If you're not in our Facebook group, do come and join us. Also, check out Tangent Templates. It's a great way to just get started on KDP, create simple books. We have well over 50 template interiors in there, so you can create books on all kinds of topics, including dated planners. So I wish you all the best with your books. Have fun with this and have a great Mother's Day. Bye.